something to the camera? No. You say it's so long You saying that it's been way too long You say it's too long You saying that it's been way too I know it's been a while I think it's time to vent this My hits all over the net You would think that I play tennis off Let the world be your canvas and paint the picture vivid. You only get one life, let's make sure that we all live it all. Live it all. You say it's so long. You saying that it's been way too long. You say it's too long You saying that it's been way too You say it's too long You saying that it's been way too We could go. Get to go. Cool. Alrighty. All, right. All right. Let's do it. So let's do this. Okay. <clears throat> what is your name and what do you do? Uh, my name is Owen Kelly. I am a recording and mix engineer. Okay. And what part do you play in Castro's journey through music? Um, my job is just to help him take his vision and get it to where it needs to be. Uh, you know, he has this big idea, so my job is to record it and you know capture that sound, that vision. Our chemistry, it's, you know, it's, I guess it's a professional one, but it's, it's more of friendship first, so it's a lot of joking around, sometimes maybe too much, we don't get a whole lot done, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very relaxed environment. He's very meticulous, you know, he's very prepared when he comes in here, he's, you know, a lot of artists, you know, they come in, it's, it's everybody's different, so, the, you know, it's always about the vibe, some are very prepared, some just wing it, but Castro has this, like I was saying before, a big vision, so he, he comes in and he knows exactly what he wants, and it's, it's very, very detailed, very precise. One more time. See the chemistry whenever we connect. I wanna live with you, don't wanna live with regret. I'ma keep it real. This ain't no summertime fling. Word of Michael Buffer, yeah, I'll put you in the ring. Ah. That should be good. That should be good, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I can see the chemistry whenever we connect. I wanna live with you, don't wanna live with regret. I'm probably the most impressive I've seen out of a lot of people because he's like I said before, so detailed, so he you know, he, he raises everybody else's level, so when, he, when you see somebody that works that hard, it just makes you want to work just as hard to help him achieve what he needs to achieve. I remember the first time, you know, hearing that he rapped, and, you know, you just think, oh, God, great, another person. Everybody and everybody raps. But when you hear his music, you're like, oh, wow, he's actually really good. And even from the first days, the quality of that music was always the utmost importance for, importance for him, so it's always been just very impressive. Can you think of anything that you look forward to when you're working with Castro? Just getting the album done. You know, every time, you know, I always look forward to because the music is, is, is really so good. Like, it's not just like I come in here and it's like, all right, let's get another record done by whoever it might be. I actually enjoy working on his projects because they are fun and the music is good. So just look forward to completing each track as they go along and the end product.
we're lucky enough to link with John while we're here in LA. And some of this album done the finishing touches. I don't know if that's garbage. This is fancy. <laughs> Alright, let's get to work. It's like one of those trap songs is just like, it's not even like a trap, it's like almost like, I don't even know how to explain it, but like as soon as I heard the beat, I was like, I think it's, uh, I think it's fire though, definitely, it's probably one of my favorite songs, that one, and this other song I haven't I haven't finished writing it. I'm trying to finish writing to it. Actually, I'm probably gonna start writing to it now. And I think once that is done, I think we're pretty much done. So this song right here, "Take a Chance," it uh, it the hook needs to be finished. And Owen's probably gonna kill me for this, but he uh, put down a uh, reference for the hook. Take a chance just to get it right. Yo. Yo. What's good, bro? Nothing, bro. I just finished mixing that song. You, you emailed it to me? Yeah, I'll email it to you right now. All right, I'm going to open it up. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. As always. When I'm feeling like I'm stuck and all my past is piling up Oh, I remember what mum said when I was 12 Just don't lose, lose, lose yourself Just don't lose, lose yourself What struggles do you feel Castro has had to face and overcome? <laughs> I think... You know, trying to stand out amongst the pack as an artist himself. You know, there's so many artists and some that probably shouldn't be as famous as they are. Um, you know, so just trying to stand out and, 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 and have something that somebody can gravitate towards. Uh, I think that that and just marketing himself, I guess that kind of is the same thing, but just trying to get himself more out there to more people. Do you truly believe Castro has what it takes to make it? And if so, why do you believe that? Absolutely. Uh, since day one, I've always thought about it. He's, again, aside from the quality of the work itself, just his desire and the, the drive to be such a great artist and, again, how detailed he is, you know, there's no reason why that he, he can't be the best. All those years ago when he performed on BET, you know, you, you see that, and I think that gives you an idea of how good he really is. and you know, it's that it's not impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Menace to society, goat, don't you lie to me Working for the chip like I'm working towards sobriety Still no surprise to see, these guys ain't as high as me Even a Michelin man would have a hard time trying to retire me oh. Bank account, all Forbes Bad bitch, all fours She tell me that she love me and she want more But she cannot get a ring Paul George, that shit turn me off All the shit that they be on Have you in and out of court Once you ballin' like LeBron They see me on the road So they go that extra mile Bitches in and out my drawers We ain't talking off his files Hop on a track They try to stop the run They cross me like religion Plus they see I'm close to none Am I in my prime? Not really, I'm too young Just know it's far from over, man We really just begun oh. Hold up, hold up, hold up.
Let me catch my tempo The only time they beat me if we talking instrumental This game will do you dirty, have them fucking with your mental Everybody ain't your friend but still wanna pretend though Our graveyard shifts, I think it's time to dead it I see them sending shots, posting subs like Reddit Friends come and go, girls come and stay Telling stories of my life, that's the reason they hit play oh. Um, when we get there, uh, what track you want to load up? Uh, we should probably start. Oh, that's a good question. I feel like we're pretty close to being done with Prime, so we'll probably just Prime. finish it up and tweak it up a little bit. All right. Uh, when is this release date? Really need to finish this though. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What do you think about twelve? You think it should be called twelve? Nah, nah, nah. nah. I feel like <laughs> I feel like it should be like because it's like a deep song. What's in the middle makes a lot of sense. Okay. Uh, Casino, uh, I don't know if it's going to make the album or not. Um, I just feel like the hook, it, it's dope. It sounds dope. I, it's, it's very, very demo. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 like yeah. It, was, it, it was, I mean, when I heard it was good. We never doing all that we've been doing. Lifelong dreams, all the dreams that we pursuing. Oh, man. Man, I just made a hundred bands. I don't do it because I want a bitch. I do it because I can. Yo, uh, can you go to Prime? Bang that out. I think Endless Summer sounds dope, though. I like the hook. I think it's like mainstream. I think it's super catchy. Man. Probably the best, but it is the system for sure. You think that should be the single? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, out of all, definitely the most like radio ready. Let your girl knows too, but to you that's a secret. Keep my name out your mouth. Let's be talking some numbers. I've been rocking the shows. Yo, that shit out summer. Switch on me, yeah. I got the cane in hand, first thing one of us. Can you hear me? You hear me good? <laughs> I'm the chosen one. I feel like chosen one sounds a little too cocky. Nah, it's fire. <laughs> All right. Really, I'm the chosen one? Nah, really, I'm the fucking man. I love when they switch on me. When, when we record it, I'm gonna make it sound different. Let's see. All right, we're gonna do, we're gonna do prime, good? All right. <clears throat> Uh, you know what? Uh, 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 I, uh, I chose the one. You know what? We're gonna do what? Uh, we'll do this. Do take a chance. Let's start off with take a chance because it's fresh in my head. Just give me a thumbs up when it's loaded up. <clears throat> really, I'm the chosen one. Nah, really, I'm the fucking man. I love when they switch on me. Yeah, I got the game in hand. Really, I'm the chosen one. Nah, really, I'm the fucking man. I love when they switch on me. Yeah, I got the game in hand. First they want to see me grow. Then they want to see me stress. Double cross so many times. I wonder why I'm staying blessed. Yeah, labels trying to sign me. Living on the charts. Yeah, you know where to find me. My name is Gene. Tag, whatever you want to call me. Met Castro, I think 12th grade or 11th grade in high school. So 11, 12 years now. We just linked up and stayed friends forever. I remember the first time he came to me, I was like, hey, you DJ, I rob, I have a live show. And I was like, oh, that was my dream. I never, like, I'm not a club DJ. I was like a show DJ. So when he came over, he was like, do you want to do it? I was like, let's do it. So mostly like, live performance, I kind of like help him through that process. Thank you. 
is the process like when you're preparing for a live show? Um, no prep. Um, it's goofing around. Like we come in, he'll usually bring a track list. It's like, hey, this is what I want to perform. And me to like sit down and like, okay, how are we going to chop it up? Um, what's the intro going to be like? Do we go hype all day or do we go high, low, high, low? So I come with the vibe, I guess, and I'm like, hey, this is how we're going to do the intro. This is how I'm going to cut it. This is how I'm going to scratch. And he was one of the person that was like, hey, you know how to scratch, so do you? Um, and prep for live show. Um, after that, it's all like goofing around, like making sure he remembers his lyrics. Because at the beginning, that was a struggle. It was like, uh, I don't remember my lyrics. So, um, so just like making sure like, even if it's not perfect, we have fun on stage. That's pretty much it. Um, he trusts us. Well, like, he come with a vision. Was like, hey, this is what I want to get done. Um, you DJing, you come up with the flow. I trust you. Um, so he trusts us in that. But when it comes to the media side, he have high standards. So if he can't meet that standard, sometimes he gets annoying when it's like, dude, what happened with this video? Um, but it's always never like malice. It's always like, hey, like he have high standards. So to me, just like, even if we're not on TV, he wants the best for his fan, which is always like, okay, we gotta go harder, better, and get better at what we do, so. That's awesome. Um... What is a funny or memorable moment you've had with Castro? <laughs> um, funny, I think it's the whole process from his first show when we did it in Long Island Patchogue to like, I remember like we're doing every month, we were doing small shows for like nobody to the end of that session was like Lloyd Banks in New York City. So the whole process at the beginning, we can't remember the lyrics in the middle of the I guess tour you can call it losing his voice on stage and be like hey you need to know your volume and don't scream to doing Lloyd Banks and we all look at each other after the night was like oh we just did that we performed for like thousands of people so it was just like those memories to me was like okay cool like we went from zero to a thousand within a year so we were just like that was fun let's get into it come on DJ Tag like you talking to bitches you telling them dreams but it's all hype i truly do this shit so my dreams pursuing it take it back to rome because we are about to rule this shit i follow my dreams he loves music he's not doing it because i know some people do music because it's like oh i have to do music ham is just the love and passion for it so when he does it he wants music like he wants his music to mean something and he wants to sound good or like the visual to look good so music to him is, I guess, a therapy. Like, he's like, hey. And the same thing with me, music is like, DJing for me was therapy. So to me, it's just like, two people that doesn't need music, but love doing music, came together. Um, and a lot of time, we just had fun. If you listen to his music, you're gonna see him like, talking about his personal life. He's not making it up. It's not like, new, new music now is like people lying. Like, I killed two people. Okay, cool. Like, why are you still outside? Like, you're not in jail. But Cash is like, him the love of music he doesn't need music but he just loves producing music and it's the same thing with me if you go from the first mixtape i remember driving to wendy's from for lunch in high school listening to it and he can say it was like dude you sound so much like so he knows who um to like his last mix like album was just like okay that's a growth so he doesn't stay like he doesn't stay in a comfort zone he'll try new stuff um he work hard, his writing is better. Um, they, like, he have everything to make it, and he will make it, just time now. Um, have you heard anything of this new album that he's working on? No, but I'm here today, so hopefully I can listen to the whole thing. Um, um, what are you looking forward to most in Castro's career? I'm seeing him go back to the same grind when like touring, doing small shows and going back on the road. Um, I know we all like have different life now from three, four, five years ago. Um, but seeing him being back on the road on stage, because I truly think being on stage for him is a happy place. So seeing him in that happy place 
and um, take it to the next level, pretty much. Um, have you seen Castro face any struggles over the years? Um, yes. Um, I know some behind the scene when we were like doing the small shows, how we had to like, like had to sell tickets for them and then they took the whole money. Um, so I never understood it. Um, and that's when I realized like, okay, it's not about the money, it's not about like, we're not, we don't need that. We just love music so much that we used to do some crazy stuff for promoters, not crazy like illegal stuff. It was just like stuff that didn't make sense when it comes to contracts. So, but we just, hey, let's get it done and get on stage. That was our end thing was like, hey, let's be on stage and have fun. So those struggles in the industry, which I learned when I was like, oh, I would never do that. Um, but Castro didn't mind it. He went out every time. Um, you give him five tickets to sell, sell it. You give him hundred, he'll sell them. Um, and it wasn't fair to him technically like getting money in someone else's pocket and we barely got paid. But he wanted to be on stage and get good at his craft. So he did what he had to do, which is, great yeah and out of all of his discography every mixtape album do you have a favorite song yes um his last album my desire that's one of my favorite songs i still listen to it now like it's not like i'm bsing or whatever it's a song i put on for my friends because I, I have a taste in music so i'll put it on and they was like oh who is this like is this a country artist or is this someone and like a pop artist i'm like no it's just Castro. And I was like, what? I was like, yeah. So that's my favorite song from the hook, it's the verse. And I understand it because we know each other since high school. And some people say, oh, that's a great love story. I was like, it's a true love story. Um, so that's one of my favorite songs ever. And after that is the Chief Kiff intro we have remix. Because I always play that in any concert. So it's just like, that's one of my other favorite songs. All right, last question. Um, if you could give Castro any advice as he continues his journey in music, what would it be? Um, keep grinding. Um, don't be afraid to. I think he waits to have a full work of body, like an album, to put music out. Um, just put music out, man. Um, you're a great artist. Don't wait for you to have 10 to 20 songs to put everything out at the same time. Put a song out every month. I will challenge you on camera. Every single month, put a new song out. Um, and just keep grinding. We don't have to wait for an album because they take 10 years to come out, but keep putting music out. That's my challenge to you. Have fun. Um, you're great at it, so keep putting music out every single month. I, I, I think that I found one, yeah. Little mama gonna ride till the wheels fall off. Yeah, I love being around y'all, yeah. yeah. we gon' hit the town, we gon' take the top off, yeah. Cruising in a drop top in the summertime. She sing along like nine and nine, nine. Something about you in a crop top, it get you off my mind. Got me singing like nine and nine, nine, nine. I think that I found one, yeah. Little mama gonna ride till the wheels fall off, yeah. I love being around. Like a goddess, all the things I would do Sober thoughts, but you hitting high notes Steady hitting like all the songs that I wrote Yeah, this ain't no debate Yeah, X-Man play X games, then he can skate Let's keep it straight, I ain't trying to simp But you got me on some bullshit, Scotty Pimp Yeah, she from LA, I'm a East Coast baby I know my chance is slim if you acting shady So tell me what you wanna be I wanna make you mine, just fall in love with me Mama gonna ride till the wheels fall off Yeah, I love being around y'all yeah. yeah, we gon' hit the town We gon' take the top off Yeah, cruising in a drop top In the summertime She sing along like nah, 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 nah Something about you in a crop top Can't get you off my mind Got me singing like nah, 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 nah I think that I found one Whenever we connect, I wanna live with you, don't wanna live with regret. I'ma keep it real, this ain't no summertime fling. Word of Michael Buffer, yeah, I'll put you in the ring. I met her Malibu sipping, champagne dripping. Now she in my passenger seat and I'm gripping. Them thighs. No, I ain't telling no lies, they ain't no surprise. I ain't like those guys, I'm yours. Endless summer, let's make it last. You are my sunshine, like I'm Johnny Cash, yeah. I'm down to give you my heart, cause it's always been all about you.
shoot from the start. Cruising in a drop top in the summertime. She sing along like nine and a nine. Something about you in a crop top can get you off my mind. Got me singing like nine and a nine, nine. I think that I found one. Yeah, little mama gonna ride till the wheels fall off. Yeah, I love being around ya. Yeah. yeah, we gon' hit the town, we gon' take the top off. Yeah, cruising in a drop top in the summertime. She sing along like. Start from the top? Yeah. Okay. Alright, so who are you? Tell us about yourself. Um, my name is Castro. I'm a rapper and songwriter from Long Island. And I like to make music. Fuck all that cash, you gotta chill shit. Just know that I am legend, no Will Smith. Yeah. I've been putting all the work, never faking on the green, but they don't want it on their turf. Oh man, I'm the rookie of my time. They start to see the change, plus I'm fucking with these dimes. Damn, and I ain't even trying to brag. Now I got them on the covers, they ain't showing no bags. Long Island where I stay up. Never falling off, only catch me on the way up. Did it all myself, yeah, I never took a pay cut. Did it all myself, man, what the fuck they gave us? I first got into music when I was very young. I was writing lyrics like like young like I want to say like fifth grade maybe um what I would do is I would I would print out the lyrics from other songs and I would like rewrite the lyrics to kind of like create my own songs and um, I used to have this little karaoke machine which I would record music and uh, yeah and is that Yeah, like the first rapper I ever heard, I think, was, I think it was Nelly. And um, I remember putting a band-aid on my face, kind of like him and going to school and everybody was, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. What would you say separates you from any other rapper that's out there? I would say a lot of the, uh, the main part that I focus on, I think that's kind of different to today's music is just the lyrics have a lot of meaning. Um, the beats and everything are very versatile. It's not just like one thing, like only trap or only... R&B is kind of a mixture of a lot of things. Whatever I like, think sounds good, I just make. Um, and what's different about this album from any other projects of work that you put out before? Honestly, I just think just the overall the sound, I think it's just gotten so much better. And I mean, I always think the next song makes better than the last song, but you know, it's just, uh, just the growth as an artist, I think. It's just, we started working on this album about, like, I think right before COVID. Um, when COVID hit, it kind of like threw everything in the whirlwind and uh, kind of slowed everything down. And um, so it's just been a journey of different things, experiments and things like that. Um, have you found it harder to be creative during COVID with lack of other you know, pieces of work being put out, lack of being able to go to the studio? Have you found it harder than? Yeah, uh, I think that with COVID, also a, a big form of motivation for me is um, performing. So the excitement to perform a new song is motivating alone. So I work harder, I think it might sound weird, but I, I get excited to go perform the music. So knowing I can't perform the music because everything's shut down, it's kind of like makes me get lazy. And I'm like, yeah, but I can make a good song when no way like, because it's kind of gratifying when you have a song, you go out there and you perform it and people gravitate towards it and it's rewarding. Can you talk about um, some of your favorite performances or favorite venues that you've ever performed at? So I would say, all right, I'll start with my worst, the worst venue I've ever had. I'm not going to say the name, but uh, we walked in and it was basically like a hallway. And there was like, it looked like there was uh, like porn sofas on the side of the, each room. It was just like these dirty old garbage sofas and the audio didn't work. And it was just horrible. Like basically every, throughout every song, the audio would just cut out. And um, I, that was just a bad experience and it sucks because there was a lot of people who came out that night that never seen me perform before because we were just working with different artists and it sucks that that's the first, probably the last time they ever came because that, that was just a bad experience. Like it was just overall. So how do you overcome things like that? Um, basically just push through it, stay positive and you know, just vibe out with, with, uh, with the crew and everything. 
Um, it's not easy, but you just push through, you know? But um, I would say the best one would probably be uh, Stage 48. That was probably like the best because it was just, um, we were doing a show with Lloyd Banks, uh, Joel Santana, and they're like big influences on New York hip hop. And uh, it was inspiring to see them and be there with them and perform on the same stages. That was a dope experience. That was probably the best venue because of the opportunity with them. And where were you in your career at that point when you were able to perform with them? I think I was just, mostly I was just grinding. I was with, uh, I was with Gene, we were in his basement. We were uh, rehearsing. Um, we were writing music, making music. We were doing local shows, a lot of local shows. And that, the local shows led up to that opportunity because a bookie agent basically who was running local shows on Long Island, the company, and they basically locked it in and we did it and it was a great experience. A little, um, there was like a little mosh pit crowd right in the center of this big crowd, and they were all from my hometown, and they were just vibing, boom, 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 shouting, screaming. That was like, yo, you came from, you know, from Long Island to Manhattan, and you're vibing out with me. That was the best part. Then it was cool to see everybody else turning up too, but you know, that part, that was dope. That was dope. But a lot of these people have actually followed you and listened to you since you were in high school. Yeah, so high school, that was interesting. Um, basically, that's when I really put myself out there in front of my peers. It's not easy, because in high school, you know, it's like a popularity contest. You don't want to look corny, you don't want to get roasted. So um, that's when I created my first mixtape, I swear. I didn't know who J. Cole was. J. Cole was nobody at the time, and I created this album or mixtape called The Warm Up. And I remember when I was giving it out, people were like, yo, J. Cole got, because he just dropped the same time I dropped. I'm like, I don't know who, I don't know who J. Cole is, bro. This shit's fire, play it though. And, um, when I got positive like feedback from that, that's when I knew like, okay, maybe I have something here. So I went through high school and I um, did the whole mixtape thing and I got a lot of uh, positive feedback, you know, people coming to, to shows and supporting, but I kind of felt stuck. So I graduate and now I'm working a uh, regular job and you know, <clears throat> just trying to pay my bills. And I start thinking and I'm like, what can I do to stand out? Like, what am I, what can I do that's different to basically get me to that next level? So I started looking at other artists who were trying to make it and things like that, and I noticed that a lot of artists are um, opening up for other acts that aren't necessarily that popular. So I know I can't call 2 Chains and be like, yo, I'm coming to the garden tonight, I wanna perform for you, whatever. <clears throat> so what I did was <clears throat> I started looking for artists who had a following, but they weren't like crazy big. They were kind of just like, you know, coming up. and. Um, started reaching out to their managers and speaking to them, speaking to them, speaking to them. And then what ended up happening was um, there's this artist called Jake Miller. And at the time he was just coming up and um, his manager was like, yo, like you're dope. Like I want to book you, I want to move forward, but the tour's already booked. Like we're going on, we're, going, we're hitting the road next week. Like everything's already locked. Like basically we're not gonna be able to add you, whatever. And I remember thinking like, damn, like nothing's gonna work for me. Nothing's gonna happen. Like it's not going. And a week prior to that, um, I submitted some music to uh, BET, and um, so I remember going, um, I remember getting the email from the manager while I was working, and then when I went on break, I went to the car, and I'm sitting in the car, and I'm like, damn, like, you know? And then basically what happened was, um, I got an email from BET, and they were like, yeah, we want you to come down and audition now, come to CBS Studios in Manhattan, and then I didn't want to go. Um, I originally, at first I wanted to go, then when the day was coming closer, I was like, this is a waste of time. So we went, we get there, and we pull up to this big building, and uh, when we get out the car, I'm like, yo, where's the line? Like, there should be a line around the corner, because they were, they were doing auditions for like, I think, like a thousand people a day or something like that, and it was like a month period. So I didn't see the line, and I was like, oh, are we late? I open up the door, there's just hallways and rooms packed of people. I'm like, oh, here we go. And uh, when I walk in, all I see is everybody looking sharp. I saw this kid, he was like 12, and 
he looked like he had a $2,000 outfit on. His manager was next to him in like an Armani suit. Here I am, I had a black t-shirt and some cargo pants and I look like a bum. And I'm like, oh, I don't know, I'm way out of my league. These, I remember these three girls that looked like they were on America's Got Talent. They had like cheerleading outfits on. I'm like, yo, everybody here looks like they already made it. And I'm like, damn, this is, you know, discouraging. As we're walking through the hallways, you hear everybody saying they're coming from other parts of the country, other parts, you know, they were from all over. It wasn't just a New York thing. And I got really discouraged. And um, we went to a room, we sat down as we're sitting there. One of the judges comes down and he uh, walks into the room and he starts yelling at everybody. And he's basically like, stop wasting my time. You guys are going up there and you're not giving your all. You're not giving your energy. You're not giving me what we came here to see. And then when he said that, basically it clicked in my brain and I was just like, oh, I gotta go up there and go off. We, we uh, eventually make our way up there. Uh, and then it was just like, it was a crazy experience because like we go up to the studio and then like Snoop Dogg's walking by and you got all these big acts and Bow Wow's walking by and I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, yo, like this is the closest I ever been to like the industry, you could say. And I'm like, this is wild. So I'm sitting there with my headphones. I'm like the last one to go out of all these people. And I'm just listening on like my iPhone 3, iPhone 4, whatever it is. I'm just bumping, listening, listening, listening. So they call us into the room. We walk into the room. And I just remember there was these two huge ass like Hawaiian bodyguards standing on each side of the room. And we walked in and then there was three judges. And um, I gave them my CD to play on this like little boom box. And, um, and they basically, I tell them like, hey, listen, like this might be weird, but I've been practicing like I had a microphone because like I thought we were gonna have a microphone. So like, that's how I'm gonna do this performance. And they're like, all right, no problem. Long story short, they play the song. I black out basically because I don't even remember what happened. I just went in and I was just rapping in front of their face. I was just going all over the place. When it all said and done, the guy went to go hit stop. The girl stopped him, let it keep going. We went to the second verse. I knew that was a good sign. But when it was done, the adrenaline was gone, and I was like, yo, I fucked up this opportunity. I was like, that's it. This was my chance. I blew it. Bodyguards were like, oh, good job, good job, good job. They were like, listen, um, if we're interested, we'll call you back. But when you come to um, auditions in New York City, you need to dress the part. We need to see the part. If you're going to be on national television, you can't come dressed with a T-shirt and some cargo pants. And I'm like, all right. I'm like, all right. I lost this, right? So we get in the cab. We go back to Long Island. Uh, a couple months passed, I didn't hear anything. The actual season 106 in Park begun, still didn't hear nothing. I keep getting phone calls, I'm thinking it's dumb, it's my mechanic because my car is breaking down. They want like a thousand dollars to fix it. I'm like, oh man, this is all of that. Long story short, I'm at work, they had a phone call, boom, BET producer, all right, we're gonna have you on the show in like two weeks. I'm like, two weeks? I was bugging, I was like, I, I don't care, I'll come tomorrow, I was just hyped. Like, let's do this. So he was like, yeah, just do me a favor. Go to the mall and get, a, get, get an outfit because you can't come dressed like that. I'm like, it wasn't even bad, though, to be honest. It was just not TV. It was just like, it, it was dope, but it just wasn't TV worthy. Um, I was like, I got you. Don't worry. No problem. Boom. And then we went down and we did it. And it, was, it was one of the best experiences, for sure. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, 19, chasing a dream. Now you all inspired. Calling triple A. These rappers, I retired. I always go hard. It's more than this rap. Every day is prom night. All these flag shit. I keep grinding until they say it's over. I'm trying to live a high life while remaining sober. Counting digits, those are just the basics. This is what your life can be when you just make it. Work hard. Yeah, that's always what they told me Getting better by the day So there will always be an old me Married to the game I tell that that I'm all yours Like they about to be juniors These sophomore. I try to tell them that it's more than just a dream See, I'm focused on my goals Feeling like a soccer team Even though it's called a dream It won't happen overnight So we working all day Trying to make it go right, right Working hard to what I'm gonna be they always doubting, but you never doubting me. Work hard, grind hard, I know I'm gonna get it, yeah. Work hard, grind hard, I know I'm gonna get it, yeah. I know, 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 I know. What's one thing you dislike about the 
dislike about the music industry? Uh, I dislike the blackballing, uh, the sneakiness. Uh, if you're not a puppy, you kind of get shunned, things like that. Um, I, I dealt with situations because I didn't want to be the puppet for this person to make the money. They kind of had connections over here and blocked me out. But I'm okay with that because at the end of the day, I got to stay true to myself. So, If you never made music, what would you be doing? Probably playing baseball. <laughs> I like to play baseball, but I love music more. But what is it that keeps you making the music? It's weird. It's like I could literally walk away from it and I'll get called back from it. It's just, it never leaves, it just always stays there. So I can't really get away from it. No matter what I do, it doesn't matter. Okay. And how do you know Owen? How long have you known each other and what part has he played in your career? Oh, uh, who? Owen. Owen. Um, so me and Owen, uh, we started working together like 10 years ago. Um, just making music, um, he's been very supportive. I think he's very talented at um, what he does, musically, engineering, and everything like that. Um, he's very passionate and dedicated, and he's very, someone that you would want in your corner when you're doing things like this. And um, how do you know Gene? How long have you known each other, and what part has he played in your career? Uh, I've known uh, Gene, or Tag, um, for about 11 years. And um, since the beginning, he's been very supportive. Um, he's done multiple things, um, DJ, photographed music videos, in-studio performances. Um, there's just so much that he's added to the point to where I got where I got. Um, I don't think I would have really gotten to that point without the support of him. Um, me and him really grinded out a lot of shows, a lot of late nights uh, working on music. And um, yeah, he's dope. And what's the best advice you've been given throughout your career? The best advice I've been given throughout my career was actually by my mom. Um, she basically, it was something along the lines of being prepared for the moment. Because the thing is, um, you could reach out, for example, you could reach out to a whole bunch of people for an opportunity that you feel like you, you have the opportunity to do something, perform at a show. Um, go on a television show, whatever it is, whatever opportunity that you personally want in life, um, you have to be prepared for it. Because the thing is, if uh, you join a physical fitness contest and you're trying your best to get into the contest and then the contest is like, yo, you got the opportunity to come tomorrow, but you gotta do 100 push-ups. If you haven't been doing 100 push-ups for the last two months, you're not waking up tomorrow doing 100 push-ups. So the thing is, you keep working, you stay humble, and you Keep applying for opportunities so when they're coming, you're ready. And don't let anybody tell you who you sound like or how to be or how this would be or that would be. Just do what feels right and natural. And at the end of the day, you'd be happy with yourself. Do people say you sound like someone specifically? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you, you already know. I don't even got to say it. <laughs> okay. And what's next for you? I hope many more shows. You know, as COVID slows down and everything. That's my main thing. I just want to get back on stage, you know, release this new music and get back on stage and build more memories and have fun and hope for the best, you know. Uh, that's it. I think we're yeah. good. Yeah. Oh. oh.
Oh, you, you, you drive? Yeah. Yeah, watch it. Don't let that shit go. I'll take your arm off. I got you. Thanks, man. <sighs> yeah, man, I drove here. <laughs> your boys here? Nah, he left. He went to go fuck some shit. <laughs> He's like, yo, what up, what up, what up? Everything's here for right? It's your boy Don't Castro. Dance. We about to open up for Lloyd Banks tonight. Don't dance. Not the MC Spills. Yeah, yeah, what up, what up? Chico. You ready? In the DJ club? Tag. <laughs> about to turn up.